Next up is a sunray shadow, a very simple dressing of a sunray shadow. There seems to be as many uh, as many dressings for a sunray shadow as there are days in the week. Uh, days in the week, but um, with that in mind, this is uh, my day of the week. Uh, so this is yeah, just just a variation, but very much uh, a sunray shadow. I have a couple of different dressings. There is also in my YouTube uh, channel library uh, a tube version, uh, which is a slightly different dressing just for the larger sizes, basically. This is the one I fish, uh, the smaller version, so up to maybe two, maybe two and a half inches long. Uh, but this tends to be the smaller end of my sunray shadow spectrum, essentially, and the, the ones I tend to dress on, uh, on doubles as a result. Um, in the vise here, I've got a, a size eight uh, Partridge Patriot up I double in silver, uh, but it essentially would be from there down. So I would fish this in size, well, maybe a size six as well, but from there down to a fourteen. Um, the ver uh, when you get down to the fourteens, there is a couple of different changes, and that being, I don't tend to do. You'll see in this one, I'm going to do like a, a false hackle and also add jungle cock when I go down to the 14s which tends to be a, a much shorter fly overall probably uh, like an inch overall in length I don't then to, uh, I don't bother doing the false hackle or the jungle cock uh, I don't feel that it, it it brings anything to it in the smaller sizes but this again is the uh, yes yeah, a, a size 8 version uh, so, uh, uh, tying thread wise I've got a, a vivus uh, black in a 10 o so I'm just going to attach that just shy of where the head of the fly would be whatever you're tying just try and avoid that section to begin with and that will just allow you to get a, a neater head uh, head at the end by not going over it so just form a small underbody just with that tying thread bring it back up to where you started and then bring in some uh, holographic silver braid flat braid really great stuff uh, you'll probably see in a lot of my other videos I tend to use this because uh, you don't need to I don't bother uh, ribbing over this stuff uh, because it's multi-fibered and because it's all woven even if the fish's teeth actually get into one uh, little filament of it uh, of the braid it doesn't then unravel the whole thing what you can do at this stage though is just if I can open this bottle uh, what you can do at this stage though is bring in just a little bit of super glue I've just got some uh, zapper gap you can also use like the fulling mill one which is very good but basically anything because it's just going to bond underneath so I just put a a small coating on the on the shank there and what's going to happen is basically when you bring it over that will just give you a secure body that's not going to go anywhere just bring that up in touching turns Again, just finish shy of where you would finish that head section. Finish it up, double it over so you've got a, a good strong bond and just snip off that excess like so. So there's the body. So we've got a, an underwing on this one and the underwing is, uh, well actually there's going to be a, a kind of a false hackle um, and then an underwing. So the false hackle uh, and the underwing is going to be uh, Arctic Runner in uh, white. I get this stuff from uh, Sean Stanton at Fr uh, Frank and Snelder. Really, really well, great guy, but also uh, he produces some fantastic materials, especially the his his dyed materials. He does a spot on job. So you're just going to need a little pinch underneath. And what we're going to do, so there's a lot of different 
uh, lengths in here. I'm just going to take a lot of these longer fibers out. You can pull them out and restack them. I don't need all this, so I'm just going to actually drop a lot of it out. Switch fingers and actually then just draw out a lot of the under fur. You should then get. I actually, yeah. You, know, you talk about stacking and uh, re realigning the tips and all this kind of stuff. What that actually gives you is all the tips finishing at the same point. A lot of my flies, I don't actually want that. I actually want the the, the natural taper. Uh, so this is going to form the like a um, again like a false hackle. I'm not going to fish the, finish it short like you. Yeah, I guess. If you were doing everything by the textbook, you would finish it towards the hook points. I actually want this trailing further back. So I'm actually going to pass it through uh, the middle of the double hooks and trail it back. Uh, probably finishing around 5mm or so beyond the uh, hook bend. So just pinch a loop when that's in shape. Make sure you're running it down the centre of the, uh, the underside, which it is and then just secure that in place. Just take a few wraps and snip off the excess. So we're going to now flip over to the wing. The wing is actually going to be in four parts. Is it four or maybe? No, no four. Um, so with that in mind, just don't go crazy with the material. Uh, because otherwise you're going to finish off with a, a a massive head and it's not really what we're trying to achieve with with this pattern so we're back in the arctic runner again i'm just going to take uh, a little pinch so arctic runner is yeah this especially the i think they would call them the um the spiky guard hairs i think it's the guard hairs rather than the underfoot um they actually are stiffer than arctic fox but finer than bucktail so if i was making the larger versions i would use bucktail at this point but i really like arctic runner on the smaller flies and what this does is it's it's a great kind of translucent material so you've got a nice bit of natural shine coming off of it but also a slight stiffness and what that will do is support a softer overwing so I'm just stripping out the a lot of that under fur again. I don't want a lot too much of that under fur, and I don't want too much of a wing from this material either. So what I'm left with then is that, and that looks good. So it is pretty mobile. So what you will find as well is that this does shrink up. Not you know, it does kind of just fold up when it gets wet. So even though it may look like I'm using quite a bit, it actually isn't because it's a relatively fine material. But again, it does have a degree of stiffness, enough just to support the uh, the softer overwing. So just measure that up. It really depends at this point uh, how long you want the overall flight to be. It will definitely be longer. The, the underwing will definitely be longer than uh, the false hackle. Uh, so I'm going to protrude this probably around two centimeters back. So when I'm happy with the length, bring it up to the front, pinch and loop, and just secure that in. Just a few turns, don't go crazy. Again, we got another three different materials to work on top of this. Cut that as closely as you can <clears throat> at the at the base, otherwise you're gonna have a load of straggly ends in the eye, which doesn't really affect the fishing, but just the overall overall look of it. So the wing, or the main wing, the softer overwing, is going to be, um, I really like, for the shorter, or the, um, yeah, these smaller sunrays, I really like American uh, opossum. Uh, just a nice, a nice material. It's um, not as, uh, it's not as stiff as, um, Again, not as stiff as a bucktail. It's it's actually fairly similar to um, to the Arctic Runner. Fairly similar, but I do like it for the overwing on these smaller smaller sun rays. So that's a enough of a pinch just there. Just measure it up as you as you're bringing it up. You know, before you actually commit to it, see how how much you've actually got. I'm quite happy with that pinch I've got there. 
So it's mobile enough that it's you're going to get good movement from it, but it's not too mobile um, that it's just going to spin or whatever, even though it's being supported anyway. But um, strip out a lot of that under fur again. <coughs> Pardon me. Measure that up. So this black should be longer than the white, okay? So just kind of make sure that it's definitely overlapping that white. When you're happy with that, again, switch fingers. You can actually unwind a couple of turns from the white. So now you're just working. You've gained a couple of head turns, basically. Like so. So there's your main wing formed. Just come in and snip those butt sections again as close as you can just to keep that really nice neat head at the end. A few straggly ends. There's a little burning tool which is useful for this as well but uh, I'll just persevere with the scissors just for a second one coming through there okay that's looking good so the next wing is um, holographic silver uh, hanked it's like a, a, a light bright uh, angel hair there's a few different names for it it's really fine material and you don't need much of it so I'm going to take probably, I'm going to double this up, so I'm going to take four, four, maybe five strands, which will be doubled up, so you'll have eight or nine strands. So if you see that there, and what we do is we just take it behind the tying thread, take it behind, slide it up and over, and then it's in position. So what you then do, just double them up. So you've got it all in one hand and then just make sure that it's running down the center of that wing so if you see that right down the center of the wing what you can do with all these ends then is just clip them so they end in different intervals some of them are already doing that some are not there you go it's going to dampen that so it fits into the frame there you go then over that I really like peacock and what I do is I use right at the top end of the peacock these fine wispy feathers right at the top of the peacock eye so you're going to need a, f a few but five five or six is more than enough and try and keep them together so that you get the natural curvature of that feather so you use that to so pinch and hold when you're cutting and then you should be able to bring them up using that natural curvature. So I'm going to introduce that up and try and finish them roughly where the longest fibre of the um, the silver angel hair light bright finishes. Finish them in the same sort of spot. That is there. That's perfect. See, everything's just running down the center of that wing. I just clip the butt as close in again as you can. So one thing left, and that's to add, um, this is very much optional. I like adding um, jungle cock cheeks. Entirely your prerogative. Don't feel that you have to. Uh, and before you take them off, just kind of measure measure them up to find the suitable sized feathers so you're not wasting such a valuable feather and to make sure they're not undersized or oversized for for the fly so it's got a couple here it's gonna strip off I'm just stripping off either side so you're just left with uh, the eye rather than just those loose feathers that run up with them and then you're just going to introduce them down the side like so. So I'm just going to introduce that there. Like so, that's one side. I'm 
Try and marry them up so they finish in the same alignment. Just there. One, two. Like so. What you do then, these little tag ends of the jungle cock feather, just fold them back. This is just to secure the jungle cock in place so that they don't pull out, which they, in fairness, have a tendency to do if you don't do this. Take it over, tidy up that head. Like so. And try and just take that thread up so everything finishes in the same spot. Like so. And snip off the excess or the uh, rest of the jungle cock stem. Like so. So that is the fly done. So it's really. Um, mobile little fly uh, works really really well so if you don't want to fish the biggest uh, the biggest and raise the the big doubles uh, sorry the big tubes I in the smaller sizes I'd much prefer tying them on um, on doubles that's the fly finished pretty simple um, a great great fly for salmon and sea trout uh, what it's uh, especially in a falling flood uh, stripping these so when people used to you know historically when people used to spin uh, so nowadays when you see good spinning water you know stripping a sun ray stripping a monkey it can produce as well you yeah, know not that I've got anything against spinning if you like spinning crack on uh, personally nowadays I just have more joy out of, out, out of catching them on the fly and making making life difficult for myself at times um, but yeah uh, just a, a fantastic fly especially if there's fresh sea trout or fresh salmon around uh, just yeah just a fantastic fly um, again there is going to be a much larger tube fly version in my library as well uh, but this is my go-to in, in in the smaller sizes uh, with sea trout and salmon so tie a couple up Give them a go and uh, I hope they bring you luck. Tight lines.